you take a flashlight and shine it toward a prism, the white light will get split up into different colors. Each color is on a different beam. Let's do the same exact thing, but this time, let's put some hydrogen gas in the pathway. The light passes through the gas, and when it splits up, certain colors are missing. Why does this happen? The answer has to do with what light really is. Take a red flashlight and shine it. We're used to thinking about light as a continuous wave. Experiments have shown that light will sometimes act like particles. So instead of a continuous wave, the light is composed of a ton of tiny little particles called photons. This probably sounds a little strange. After all, why can't we see individual photons? Imagine the light has about 10 joules of energy. Do you know how many photons there would be in 10 joules? Around that many red photons. Nature has hidden this particle-like quality of light by making photons incredibly small. Experiments didn't even begin to realize that there are photons until the late 1800s. So light is not just one giant continuous wave, it's a bunch of tiny little photons. We could represent each photon as one small little wave. So when you shine your red flashlight, a bunch of tiny photons come out. Each photon has a tiny little bit of energy. How much? It's this much. The energy you see of a photon depends on the frequency of the light, or in other words, the energy depends on the color of the light. Now, instead of writing this tiny little number here, we simply call that value h, Planck's constant. So every single photon has an energy equal to Planck's constant times the photon's frequency. When we do our experiment, different colors come out of the prism, but each color is a different frequency. And so the photons will not have the same frequency, they'll be different. This photon of purple light has a higher frequency because the crests are closer together. And as we go down the line, we see the frequency is decreasing. But we could multiply each frequency by Planck's constant. And so because frequency decreases, the energy decreases too. Why? Because the energy equals h times the frequency. But what does hydrogen have to do with any of this? First, we have to consider what an atom really looks like. An atom has a positive nucleus, and in hydrogen, there's just a single proton. Around the proton is the electron. Now, the electron is allowed to have only specific orbits. The electron can be here, or here, or it can be orbiting right here. But it's not allowed to be in the space between. Let's put the electron down in the first orbit. And we're going to come up with a second identical hydrogen atom. If we shine different colors of light, those different photons will carry different amounts of energy. The orange will have more energy because its frequency is smaller. So what happens to the electron on the left side? It absorbs the energy and it jumps to a higher level. It jumps to this farther orbit. And so you might think the same thing happens over here with the orange photon, except this orange photon has more energy, so if the electron absorbed it, it would jump to the forbidden space. And that cannot happen. So instead, the orange photon just passes on by, and it doesn't get absorbed. So what if we take a blue photon with even more energy than the orange? In this case, the blue photon has enough energy to get the electron all the way up to the second orbit. And so the blue photon will get absorbed. The point here is that only certain colors are absorbed, and others pass on by. So now we can finally understand why the experiment works the way that it does. When you shine white light, that white light contains all colors. It has purple photons, blue photons, all of them. When those photons pass through the gas, red and blue get absorbed by the electrons. And so what comes out? Everything else.